Everybody, welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victor broadcast. I'm Jeremy Pearsons, and we're joined on this broadcast again today by Brother Keith Moore. Brother Keith, thank you, sir, so much. Yes, sir. Appreciate you being here, and uh, I am so thankful to have this opportunity, and the Lord has been so gracious yes. to us yes. in these last weeks of broadcast, yes, last week is. and then all leading up mm. to today. We're beginning to sort of round out this week, but man, it's been good. It, it's been Lord. real, and I, and I use that word on purpose. Mm -hmm. We spent almost the entirety of last week's broadcast talking about being real before the Lord, yep. being yep. honest before Him. And, and I want you just to say it again because it's one of the most favorite things I, I, that I have that you say. I don't think I said that right, but, but what you say about where He'll meet you. Right. Say right. it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, we saw with the man that brought his son to the disciples and then to Jesus, he said, Lord, help my, uh, uh, I believe, help my unbelief. Yeah. And the Lord met him where he was. Yeah. He doesn't meet us where we're pretending right. to be, but he'll meet you where you are. Man, that, Hallelujah. that statement, the Lord yeah. has ministered to, that me, ministered that to me over and over and yeah. over again. And I am before him on a daily basis yeah. right now saying, Lord, if there's something in me that's not real and not genuine, mm -hmm. let's get rid of it. Right. Let's strip it away. And uh, Sarah and I both in our marriage and in our ministry uh, with our staff, we, we, are, we are on this trail to, to be real and honest before the Lord because that's the only thing that's effective. I think that that is one of the biggest uh, hindrances in folks on the outside uh, seeing the church. You know, Jesus said that we are the light of the world. We are His witness in the earth. And um, uh, there is so much phoniness, mm -hmm. so much that is not real about religion and, and including Christians I'm talking about. I'm not talking about any other group. Um, and a lot of it, people don't mean to be that way, but it was tradition and just rituals mm -hmm. of things and uh, presumptions and assumings of things that people got from their fathers, that yeah. they got from their forefathers. It's been passed down for hundreds of years now. But it was phony then, yeah. and it's phony now. And just because it's old phony <laughs> doesn't make it yeah. any less phony. And we need the yeah. Lord's help to see that. We do. Because we do. The, the, the trick of it is yeah. you, you don't see it. Yeah. It's just become a way of life, and yeah. you've got to have the Lord's help. You've got to have Him shining light on some areas. It's the truth, because the God of this world, the, the devil, is the most phony thing that's ever been. He is the father of lies. Yeah. And this whole world is cloaked with deception and falseness and phoniness, facade. Mm -hmm. And so you won't notice phoniness because people all around you are maintaining some degree of affront. Yeah. And you, like you say, you have to have revelation. And I think we ought to just pray with everybody that's, uh, that's joined with us right now and, and, and lead them and let's ask yeah. them, ask the Lord to show them what's the difference. Yeah. Because you, like you said, you need his revelation and, and discernment to even see it. But it begins not with that, but with a willingness mm -hmm. that you're willing. If he shows you something is false and phony about yourself, you're willing to look at that and go, mm -hmm. okay, then I'm done with it. We're changing that today. But if you do that, uh, you know, the phony is in the way of the real. It's taken the place the real should have. And so many times people have maintained it because they didn't know if they could get the real or how to get the real. And they'd rather have the phony than nothing. Mm. <laughs> but no, you don't. It's taken the place of the real. Mm. So let's do that. Let, let's pray with everybody joining with us and release your faith right mm -hmm. now on that. Father, in Jesus' name, and you need to pray it out loud there watching with us. Say, Father, I'm asking you. Father, I'm asking you. Show me. Show me. What's real. What's real. And what's not real. And what's not real. What's you. What's you. And what is not you. And what is not you. What is honest. What is honest. And what is deceptive. And what is deceptive. About myself. About myself. 
about church, about church, about ministry, about ministry, anything I've grown up in, anything I've grown up I've in, I've been around, I've been around. I want to know. I want to know. I don't care how closely I've clung to it. I don't care how closely I've clung if to it. If it's not real, if it's not real, if it's not you, if it's not you, I want to be rid of it. I want to be rid of Thank it. You Thank you for showing us. Thank you for showing us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're going to be like Jesus. Yes. Who grew in grace mm -hmm. and in truth. Yep. John said that we received of his fullness grace upon grace. Mm -hmm. he, had, he, he had grown in the grace of God, but not just that, he was full of truth. And yes. if he was full of truth, no room for lies. No room for all that other stuff. Nothing else. Phony stuff. <laughs> well, we, we've got today and tomorrow, but I believe the Lord can help us and get, it, get in what we need to get in. Where, where do so we need to start it. in this today? Uh, we begin, we don't have to turn there, but we begin in Mark 9, where the man brought his son to the disciples and then to Jesus. He said, if you can do anything, have compassion on us, help us. Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. The man cried out and said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. And that honesty that we're just talking about, uh, his choice to believe and then his honesty about where his faith was at and not at, the Lord met him, not where he was pretending to be, but where he really was. And man, a couple of verses later, his boy is healed, mm. delivered, a miracle. And the Lord prompted me, we began uh, previous week talking about this, of two areas that uh, the Lord's people are missing it in, a lot of folks. One is uh, waiting on the Lord somehow that uh, thinking that when the Lord gets ready in His own good time, in His own good way, He's going to do this miracle for me. Well, no, if it's something the Lord's already bought and paid for that Jesus got, we're not waiting on Him just like the new birth. We're not waiting on Him. But then the second thing is assuming I've got a lot of faith because you've been around faith teaching or, and you maybe you've got a lot of materials on faith, read books on faith, and assuming, presuming, that because I've heard so much about faith, I have a lot of faith and I'm strong in faith. When again and again, when things didn't happen, it, people try to make it some different reason, but the reason was lack of faith. I don't care if you've been born again 50 years. I don't care if you've been to everybody in their brother and sister's faith conference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when it didn't work for you, mm -hmm. if you go back and be honest, it was because of your lack of faith. That's the answer many, many times, most of the time. That's what's going on. And so... That doesn't need to offend us. It doesn't. <laughs> if it bothers you, then it shows some pride yeah. that you hadn't dealt with yet yeah. and not living in reality. Yeah. You've been pretending. Yeah. And, um, and so it's not a matter... We, we looked at uh, the scriptures that talked about God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Not Paul wrought special miracles by the hands of God, but God did it mm -hmm. by Paul. And we talked about how these things happen. And we've already had some things happen, but some answers can come today. Let's go to John and look at the first miracle in Jesus' ministry. Uh, because if we do the works that Jesus did, we'll have to do them the same way, the way yeah. that he did it. We can't do it a different way. Right. The servant's not above his master. And you see how he did it in John 2. Yeah. And then we'll also see the second miracle in John 4, if, we, if not today, tomorrow. But in John uh, 2 and verse 1, it says, uh, The third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, or they lacked and ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. The literal Greek, I believe, says, What to me and to thee? In other words, what is that to us? And that's not being rude. It's being real. And there's a revelation here. Uh, some people have had the idea that if, if, if I had enough faith, then I could get enough of the power of God that I could operate in 
and I could just go clean out the hospitals. I could just go set everybody free from all that. No, no, that's not happening. Mm -hmm. That's never going to happen. Jesus didn't do it that way, yeah. and no man or woman following him is going to do it that way. Yeah. Again, it's not what I can build myself up to do by the power of God. No, no, it's what God can do by us if we learn to yield to him. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, we see other instances like where the five porches of sick people were. Jesus didn't just go and clean that out. Now, when he came to a town and preached, everybody that believed it and everybody that received it was healed. Mm. But there are other places like his own hometown where they didn't receive him, where no outstanding things happened. Mm -hmm. So he's not just going into a place, Jesus himself, and just using his faith and fixing everybody's problem. Yeah. That didn't happen with him. That's not going to happen with us. He went to one man with those five porches of sick folks. He ministered to him and turned around and left. Mm. Why? Bec he tells us, why would you do it that way, Lord? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you? He said, I do nothing of myself. Mm. I didn't come to do my own will. I, I say what I hear the Father say. I do what, he, what I see him do. And I believe, if you examine the scriptures, a lot of times he's seeing himself do it but what that is, is the Father in him mm -hmm. is doing it. Yeah. And so he went and did what he saw himself do, or better way to say it, what he saw the Father do yeah. through him by, him, yeah. by him. And it's not him doing things by his faith and power. It's the Father doing things by him. And so when this, he, he's telling her and them, what's that to us? Obviously, at this point, he hasn't heard anything. Mm -hmm. So he's not going to try to fix anything or do anything. Good lesson for us to learn. And the, just because some, somebody comes and tries to put pressure on you, mm -hmm. like that man did even with Jesus, he said, if you can do something, fix this. And Jesus said, well, no, <laughs> if you can have faith, if you can believe. Yeah. Well, his, uh, his mother, uh, verse 5, she turned around and said to them, whatever he says to you, do it. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why this is recorded in the scriptures is because that sets the stage for a miracle. We don't have faith for it yet, but we're in a state of expectation and we're open. Mm -hmm. We're saying, Lord, whatever he said, now, now, now put your spiritual antenna up, get your ears open, attend to his words, be ready for him to say something to you. Mm -hmm. Don't try to tell him what to say. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Be open for him to tell you yeah. what to say. And in that, in that environment of humility, openness, submission, be, be open to whatever he's going to tell you. Here came a word from the Lord. Mm. It came to Jesus. And then it came to them through Jesus. And he said... Uh, they're, they're set there six water pots of stone containing two or three firkins apiece, 20, uh, 30 gallons, I, I suppose. And Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. This is how you have a miracle. Now, we, we need to take away the drama and the over-spectacularization of these things. If we'd have been there, Jeremy, we wouldn't have felt any tingling <laughs> we wouldn't have seen any halos, you know. In fact, Isaiah talks about Jesus, that there was no form nor comeliness about him that we should desire him. There were all kind of people met Jesus going down the street and just never noticed mm -hmm. that he was the Messiah, the anointed one. Yeah. So we'd have all been sitting there and it would have just been wedding day as we had experienced before. But... When he heard from the Father, we know why he said this, go fill the water pots. He tells us repeatedly, I only say what I hear the Father say. Mm -hmm. So he heard, the, he heard himself say it. He heard the Father say it through him. Mm -hmm. So he just acts on it. Go fill the water pots. That's a word from God. It is a word from God. You know, and I think sometimes <laughs> we're waiting on this, this, this word from God that is so far out. And yeah. It, 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 go fill the water pots. <laughs> That's yeah. a word from God and you can act on it, can't you? Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, Brother Hagen, Brother Kenneth Hagen, he used to say this a lot. He'd say, uh, there are many people, he said, seeking for the spectacular mm -hmm. and missing the supernatural. Mm -hmm. And it's what you're talking about. They, they're looking for something earth shaking, yeah. looking for something that's uh, so different from anything yeah. that I'm uh, familiar with. And yet, there's some simple instruction. Yeah. Go fill the water pots up. Was it Naaman that came to the prophet in the Old yeah. Testament and said, I thought you were going to come out right. here and wave your hand over <laughs> exactly. it and say this and that. And exactly. Said, Go dip in the water. Yeah. yeah. It was too simple. And he for almost it. didn't almost missed receive. It. Almost missed it. Yeah. And the thing is, uh, the Lord leads in steps of faith. Now, we're talking about a miracle. Mm -hmm. This is the first miracle that occurred in Jesus' ministry that we have record of in, any, in anybody's book. This is an outstanding, supernatural, spectacular miracle. Mm -hmm. And yet it happened in such a non-assuming, non-spectacular way. Go fill the water pots up. Mm -hmm. And because they listened to what Jesus' mother told them, whatever he says to you, do it. They wouldn't have known why. This wouldn't have made sense. If you need wine, why go fill water pots right. up? And it's not that you could just turn the faucet on, drop a hose in there. You got to go to the well. You got to draw it out. This is hot, sweaty work. Yeah. And it's 20, 30 gallons a piece. Mm -hmm. You got to haul these little buckets and this is work. And you got a wedding that's going on that you need to be attending to. And that's why a lot of times folks don't get miracles because the instruction doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to their natural mind and they are so locked into their logic and reasoning. If you could see the whole picture from God's perspective, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. But because you're only seeing this much of it, you don't know where he came from, where yeah. he's going with this, you have to take it by faith. You yeah. just have to trust if him. If you saw the whole thing, it wouldn't be. Wouldn't right. be faith. You just have to trust him and say, all right, boys, get these water pots filled. Yeah. Why? We don't have to know why. Yeah. He said, do it. So here we go. And they fill the water pots up. Still, we don't see the miracle. And yet, from the time they started obeying the Lord, a miracle has been set in motion. Mm -hmm. And then he says, now draw it out and bear it to the governor of the feast. And they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. He said, every man at the beginning does uh, set forth good wine. And then when men have well drunk that which is worse, you've kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory mm -hmm. and his disciples believed on him. Yeah. And even when the miracle had happened, the governor of feast, the feast did not know it was a miracle. And then the people that were drinking it did not know. There's no bells from heaven. <laughs> There's no angels appearing. There's no music. They didn't even know a miracle had happened. The guys that drew the water, when they took and served it, and the governor of the feast goes, wow, this is great. This is some good. You saved the good stuff till now. All the guys that had drew the water, they, they thought, why? Yeah. Because <laughs> they knew they had put H2O in there. And this is how miracles happen, Jeremy. They can happen so quick and, and, and in such a non-assuming way. Mm -hmm. you, you come before the Lord. You say, Lord, whatever you say to me, yeah. I'm going to do it. Tell me what to do in this situation. I know you know what to do. Yeah. I'm asking you. And then you just wait on him. You look for it. You expect it. Mm -hmm. and, and if you'll do it in honesty and faith, he'll give you a direction. Yeah. And it may not seem like it's even connected to this. Right. You may think, well, why do I want to do that? Just do it. Yeah. Just whatever he says to you, do it. Yeah. And even when taking that step, it may not be obvious. See, there were two steps here. Fill the water pots with water. Then take it out and, and deliver it to the governor of the feast. Mm -hmm. They didn't, something happened between the time they dipped it out and between the time he tasted of it. Yeah. The molecular structure changed. This is a miracle. And this is, this, God hadn't changed. Mm -hmm. If he can turn water into wine, change the molecular atomic structure of something, mm -hmm. he can change the molecular structure of an organ. Yeah. 
He can change the molecular structure of blood, which he's doing right now. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, blood is being changed. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I know there were white cell problems, there were red cell problems, there were other problems, but you need to believe with me. Believe with us right now. Yes. In Jesus' name. Thank Father, you, we speak to the blood. Blood be cleansed, blood be changed, Thank red you. blood cells, white blood cells, corpuscles, be made perfect, be normal, be cleansed, be healed in Jesus' Jesus name. name. Hallelujah. Come on, are you believing it right now? Yes. Are you believing it? Do you believe he turned this water into wine? Yes. If he can do that, they can, he can turn diseased blood mm -hmm. into clean blood. Yeah. Diseased liver into clean liver. Yeah. Diseased kidneys into clean kidneys. Mm -hmm. Believe it, receive it right now. In the name of in Jesus, Jesus, just, just name. take your faith. Do you like that man? Don't say, well, do I have enough faith? Choose to believe. And the Lord will meet you where you are. Say, Lord, I choose to believe this. I choose to receive choose it to right now in Jesus' name. The healing power of God, the, the glistening, life-giving, changing power of God. Same power that changed that water into wine is changing my blood, mm -hmm. is changing my nerve flow, is changing my brain cells, is changing my organs. Yeah. Believe you receive it right now. In Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. Take it in Jesus' name yeah. and say, I choose to believe it. Forget about all that other stuff. Just I choose to believe it. And also, he's going to direct you to take some steps like this. Yeah. He'll tell you, do this, maybe after the broadcast, maybe during, maybe tomorrow. Yeah. A word will come up in you. Take this step. Start doing this. Start doing that. Yeah. Don't try to figure it all out. Don't try to overanalyze it. Don't be skeptical. Don't be slow to believe. Just say, sir, yes, sir. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Start yeah. doing it. It'll lead you to another step, which will lead you to another step that will not only help you keep your healing, it'll prevent a, a relapse yeah. because some of the things that caused it need to be changed so it doesn't occur again. And the Lord, he leads us just whatever he says to you, mm -hmm. do it. Take that yeah. step, come right out of it into not not feel better, get worse, feel better, get worse. Come up here, healed and strong, stay here. Mm -hmm. Serve God the rest of your days yeah. till you get out of here. And, and whatever the Lord says to you, you've heard Brother Keith say this before, but don't let it be too simple for you. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't see how it's connected, you're praying over one thing and the Lord says something to you like, go to bed earlier. Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. I'm not thinking about that. I'm well, just do, do what he says do to it. do. And that might have been a word for you right there. <laughs> right there. But, uh, but listen to him. And whatever it is, as simple as it seems, it's got life in it. It's got, it is connected to life, and it is the source of your life. Thank you, Father. So receive it and commit to him to hear his voice. And the good news is there he's speaking. He's speaking. Then commit to do it. And the good news is he'll go to work in you to Thank will you, and Lord. to do his good Thank word. you, Lord. And then let him work on your behalf. Thank you, Thank Father. You. We're out of time on this broadcast, but don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a moment. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Jesus himself said that if you can believe, all things are possible. The question is, can you really believe? And the answer is a resounding yes, you can. You can make the decision to believe and grow your faith to experience the miraculous. Faith is very easy, and God wants you to know how to use it. Kenneth Copeland has been teaching faith for more than 45 years and is offering you his revelation and understanding in the Faith That Sets You Free package. Included is the Force of Faith book, which gives you a better understanding of what faith is and Faith How It Works CD set. In it, you'll learn God's process for faith. Faith is not this independent, what I'm going to do. Faith is complete dependence yeah. on God. You can have faith in God. Decide today. Grow your faith and experience miracles in your life and the lives of those around you. Develop a strong foundation of faith in the Word of God. Order the Faith That Sets You Free package today at a special price of only $19.99 and enjoy a savings of 20%. Simply log on to kcm.org slash TV special or call our toll-free number and request your package today. Enjoy a life of victory that comes when you understand how to apply your faith. For an additional 10% off, 
Order your package online. Before we leave today, I want to encourage you once again to get a hold of these materials, these products that we're offering you. The Force of Faith book by Kenneth Copeland and then this CD series by Brother Copeland, Faith, How It Works. Now, now where's faith going to come from when you need it? It's going to come by getting a hold of these things, listening to this, reading this, getting your Bible out and getting the Word going down uh, into your heart through what you see and through what you hear. And then when it gets down in there, it'll come back out your mouth. And that's when Jesus said things will begin to change around you. Build your faith on the Word of God because uh, there's stuff on its way. And you probably didn't even need me to tell you that, but you can be ready for it when it comes. Amen. You need to understand that, that just wishing or desiring, that's not faith. But you build your expectation on the Word of God. You build it strong and you, you, th you think on it and you speak it that's when you begin to make your way the, a successful way in front of you. Order these things. Get them into your life today. Amen. I also want to remind you that everything we've been talking about on these weeks of broadcast uh, are from a much larger series that Brother Keith preached uh, there at Faith, Faith Life Church, a series called Faith for Miracles. So if you want that, and you do, <laughs> go to morelife.org. You can download it, and it's absolutely free. Uh, no charge means no excuse. Get it into your life. Let me invite you to join my grandparents, Ken and Glory Copeland in Columbia, South Carolina next week, sep September 25th through the 27th for the 2014 Word Explosion Conference. This is a conference and they're joined by Bill Winston and Chaplain Downing. They're going to be there ministering the Word and this is open. It's a free event, open to the public. So make plans to get in there, get into this atmosphere where the Word is being preached and get your life changed. Let the Word do in you what only the Word can do. Amen. So for more information about this meeting and other meetings, other things going on here at Kenneth Copeland Ministries, you can always visit us online at kcm.org. Thank you so much for joining us this week. It's been a pleasure to be with you. Join us again tomorrow. Don't miss this. Until then, this is Jeremy Pearsons and Keith Moore reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Learn who you are in Christ and how to begin your new life in victory. Request your free salvation package today at kcm.org. Jesus did it all for you. Receive his love and experience the good life God has for you. For additional teaching and free information on salvation, go to kcm.org. Continue to grow in God's word with this week's Believer's Voice of Victory, available at kcm.org for purchase, streaming, or download. Let God's grace abound toward you and live in the blessing. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. Word Explosion, September 25th through 27th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, Bill Winston and Chaplain A.L. Downing in Columbia, South Carolina. The 2014 Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 13th through 15th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia. The 2015 Branson Victory Campaign, February 26th through 28th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri.